As promised, in today's video, we are going to be taking care of the rear diff bushing in the 370Z Nismo because it is completely blown out. Like, it's not a little blown out, it is completely blown out. Uh, a couple of videos ago, we did look up there and see exactly what's going on. So, we're going to take care of that today. We did order the upgraded polyurethane bushing from Z1 Motorsports. So, we're going to go ahead and pull in the 370Z Nismo. As always, I do have to give you guys a cool start in this car because it sounds so good. So, so good. Let's go. I love that exhaust so much, so much. So one thing I did not know, and I kind of learned the hard way not the hard way but I just learned eventually through experience of course is when a car is tough to get out of first gear that's a sign that your rear diff bushing is pretty much going out so just kind of kind of demonstrate that for you guys you hear that that like that rocking back and forth noise it's kind of not doing it right Let's see if I can do it Let's see if I can do it right now oh well I just stalled it Car sounds good though. <laughs> so to do the rear diff bushing in this car, there is a special tool that you need. Technically you don't need it. There is another way of doing it. But of course this makes it a little bit easier. The guy from Facebook Marketplace was actually kind enough to let us borrow this because guys, that tool brand new is $130. $130 for like a one-time use because I imagine that once we change these rear diff bushing, we're not gonna have to ever do it again. Uh, so again, shout out to that guy. If you guys are attempting to do this on your own, that's the company that makes the tool and that is the skew number on the bottom right there. The tool actually, it's, he said this one got a little messed up because I guess his bushing was seized. Um, but in a sense, this is basically what it is. Literally a tool to press on the new one and then we'll take off the old one and press on the new one. Um, it's actually supposed to come with some grease too, but it looks like it's missing. I'm sure we can do it without it. But yeah, let's go ahead and jack this car up. There are a numerous things we're gonna take off, like the exhaust, we're gonna take off the, I think the subframe dampening, that's what it's called, obviously the actual diff itself. And then I think we're gonna take off some sway bars or something like that. So I'm just hoping that this goes as planned because every time I work on this car, something out of the ordinary breaks. So I'm just trying to be cautious and just hopefully everything goes as planned. So looking underneath the car, uh, right away, just pretty much assessing everything we do have to take off. So me personally with my exhaust setup, I don't think I need to remove the muffler just cause mine splits right here. So I'll just have to remove like this mid pipe right here. Cause the thing is the differential is way over here. I don't need to move the muffler cause it cuts off right here. So let's remove this pipe. Uh, we're gonna have to remove this brace. Uh, let's see, we're gonna have to remove this dampener. And then that's pretty much it as far as what I can see. Oh, of course the axle itself. Good thing is the axles actually screw in. They're not actually like slid in or whatever. So uh, just those three, four things. And uh, let's see where it takes us. So now that we have the mid pipe off, we're gonna go ahead and take this bracing off. I have my impact that I'm gonna use by Milwaukee. You guys know Milwaukee's the best. But I'm using the impact because I feel like when going slow on these bolts, they tend to like, you have like a better chance of breaking them. So I'm using my impact to take these off. There's two over there, two over here. And once you take this off, I think I'll be a little at ease with breaking stuff. But yeah, as you guys can see, that looks a little welded in for whatever reason, even though I know it's not. So we're gonna go ahead and, uh, yeah, just use impact for that. No, come on. Oh, let's go. Let's go. All right. So we got those out. All right, just so that we don't lose these bolts, we're gonna go ahead and put it back in. Got that out. All right, I'm putting all bolts back where they where I got them from just because I don't want to lose no bolts. I don't want none going missing because 
that's the most annoying thing when you're trying to put stuff back. You're like, oh, let's go this way. Nope, not doing that. So we're going to put everything back. So I think all that's left to do right now, which is pretty crazy, all that's left to do is to take the axles off, the dry shaft, and that's, yeah, that's pretty much it. Uh, that sway bar, shoot. Yep, we might have to take that sway bar off. I'm not too happy about that because everybody knows sway bars are very annoying to take off, but it's all good, we'll get through it. So there's about two major things you have to do before attempting to drop this differential. One being the drive shaft. So I've already done this just because I dropped the transmission before, but what it is, e-brake has to be on. You're gonna take some bolts off, um, then you have to take the e-brake off, rotate this, put the e-brake back on, then come down here and take some more off. So you're pretty much gonna have to do that. Um, and if you're by yourself, it's gonna, gonna suck. And then you're pretty much gonna have to do the same exact thing when taking off these axles. But the cool thing is, these are just bolt on and bolt off. So um, yeah, that's pretty much the two major things you have to do before dropping this guy right here. But other than that, it's not too bad, but I don't wanna speak too soon. I know the drive shaft's not gonna be too bad because again, I've done that before but it's just these axles. I think these been off before because if you guys are familiar with these cars, they have like a known issue where they start clicking so you have to take the axles off and grease them. So I think these been off before, but again, um, I'm just a little scared because I, I haven't done them, so I just don't want them to give me issues. But let's go ahead and do those two things and uh, let's go ahead and drop this guy. This should be too hard, hopefully not. I feel like some bolts are meant to like, once they hit service, they're meant to be like hard to take off. That makes any sense. It's like, sheesh. And that's it. That's all we're gonna do. Let's see if a gun will successfully actually take this bolt off. Uh oh, uh oh, we got a winner. So because of the fact that this is an impact, you technically don't need the e-brake on for it because it's such a high torque. That just takes it off right now. Yo, so we got the axle out. Now I'm gonna go ahead and tie this up with like a strap or something because I don't want to put any stress on that ball joint right there. So I'm gonna just try to find a rope or something to tie this up and then we'll do the other side. And that's pretty much it. We just gotta release. I believe there's like an 18 holding in that bushing and then we can literally just drop the differential. So this diff is ready to come out. So how we're holding these, uh, these axles in is by wire, I mean, it's strong enough. You don't need something that's crazy or something that's like freaking can handle like 200 pounds. These axles don't weigh that much. So I just grabbed some wire that I had in the toolbox for both sides to hold it. So what we're gonna do now is again, I believe there's some type of uh, like 18 millimeter bolt in the middle right here because the rear diff bushing is located right there. So you just stick like an 18 socket in here. You wanna loosen that. And then I believe there is a sensor that is also that we have to unplug that plug into the actual differential. So one of them is gonna be right here that you do have to unplug before you drop it. You make sure that you do that before you drop it. And then there's gonna be another sensor right here that you wanna unplug. Because if you don't do that and you drop it, you are going to break these sensors. There's also a clip on the uh, the rear subframe right here too that you also want to make sure you want to loosen because if not, again, it's going to break it. So uh, make sure you do that before you drop it. And then there are two bolts back here. So one on this side, and then there's going to be one on the other side that we loosen. And of course, use a jack. Uh, transmission jack actually would work pretty well in this case, but if not, you can just use like a regular jack, which we have right there to support it on its way down. And uh, We'll work on getting this bushing out. So we have these sensors out and unclip. So again, there's gonna be one clip on the top that looks like that. This is the clip. So now we just have to take off this bolt in the middle and then those two. That's literally what's holding on this this uh, difference right now. It's just this bolt in the center right here and then those two in the back. So I believe it's a 17. Let's see. There's a the socket in here. Yeah, it feels as if it's a 17. Now, we're gonna use a breaker bar. Now, you could use anything you want for this. I have this breaker bar that fits perfectly with this socket. And we're gonna give it a tug. Okay, I might, do, I might need two hands for this. <laughs> All right, so yeah, I was able to get it loose. Again, it's a 17, not an 18. But I really don't know what to expect at this point. So I'm just gonna put the jack underneath here to support it, just in case anything happens. And then uh, once we get that bolt in the front out, we're gonna go ahead and work on those rear ones. This thing might look rusty and dusty, but this is legit what pulled the transmission out of this car to do the clutch, so. 
it should work fairly well. And the cool thing is, it's almost like it's meant to be handheld because it has like this little dial right here. We lower it, we tighten it, and then you could just, of course, the stick goes in here, but you literally just pump it. Perfect. Originally, I wasn't going to pull the sway bar, but it actually wasn't that bad, so I just pulled it. Because my thing is, you know how sway bars are, at least for the front wheels, when you have to like, they have to be a certain direction, and it's kind of annoying putting them back, but this wasn't actually that bad, so we went ahead and pulled it. Now, this gives us free access to take these two bolts on the back off, and uh, off with this diff. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and unbox it. This is my first time actually uh, opening this box. Right away, I forgot that I ordered differential fluid so that we can change the fluid out of there. So I'm already happy. Thank you. So, what is this? No idea. What are those instructions? You got the main rear diff, maybe? Rear? That's, that is that? Yeah, it says rear. Oh, yeah. Uh, two fronts. And those are the two fronts. And then we oh, have the fluid. fluid. Man, I'm so happy. I totally forgot that we ordered fluid to change the fluid out in the differential. So we're probably not going to take care of this until we mount everything back on. So it does look a little better than what I thought. But as you guys can see, it's pretty much ripped on the top right there. So we're still going to have to use the tool to get it out. Now this technically would be the hard part. So let's just hope that that tool works flawlessly. So it goes like this, right? This goes in here. Like that. And then... This goes on the other end, like that. Yeah. Alright, yeah. Right. According to what I read. <laughs> you, right. you, you got your... Fuck it. No, you don't got your ratchet, huh? I don't, but... It says I'm, do uh, not use impact. impact. Oh, well, I'm trying to understand how this is going to work, so... Me too, but... I don't... The only way we're gonna find out is by doing that. <laughs> no, this don't look like an 18. No, I grabbed it out of where you had it. It's not an 18. What is it? Bigger? I don't know. It's bigger. Oh. <laughs> it's in action because it's working. It sure is. It's pulling, huh? Yeah. I want to hear y'all. I don't know if you guys could see it. Pulling it. Might be out already. Yeah. Oh snap! Well, okay, shout out. Whoever made this. Shout out, Sam Mateo, dude. <laughs> <laughs> so this was this little squeaky noise you guys hearing in the background of the videos. Dude, that's crazy. Look how bad this is. <laughs> that is like mashed potatoes. Yeah. Look at that. It's, man, keep in mind, it's supposed to come out in one piece, and this is ripped. So this is basically what I was riding around with. All ripped like that. But you ripped it. I mean... It wasn't ripped. <laughs> a little bit, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> the guy that I borrowed this tool from told me that somehow, for some reason, uh, this never here got stuck on this, like, thread shaft thingy. So uh, for what we need to use it for right now, technically it's not going to work because there's too much thread showing on this side, and it's... In the long run, it, it's basically not going to work, right? It's too short. So what we're doing right now is we're just using, we're utilizing the smaller ones technically, which we're not supposed to do because this is, this is right now we're trying to take off the sleeve of the actual bushing. And you need kind of like a heavy duty shaft, I guess, through it. But it's not going to work because as I explained, he somehow, some reason got that nut stuck on it. So we're just going to use a smaller one and hope that it works. We just have a bunch of washing and stuff on each side. And uh, let's see how this goes. Thanks, All right, so none of those uh, home remedies work, so we're just gonna head to uh, 
Home Depot, we're gonna pick up a Sawzall blade and we're just gonna cut the actual sleeve out. Cause I don't wanna keep mucking around with this thing and literally it take days and even a couple days. So we're back from the store. Of course it's dark time. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna use that Sawzall right there and we are gonna cut this sleeve out. I'm not really gonna show you guys too much of the process. I just wanna get it done cause it's already dark and uh, it's late too. So we're just gonna cut it out and then I'll somewhat show you guys what it is to uh, put the bushing back in because we're gonna have to press that bushing back in and then uh, hopefully we're able to get it done within an hour or two but in a sense this is gonna be our current situation so again there's this little outer sleeve right here that we have to cut so we're gonna cut like a like a little yeah i would say like cut right here cut right there and then we're gonna bend this like this and then push it out so this is normally what people would do when they don't have the tool in a sense it kind of put me in the same situation because we could have got this pushing out no problem because like i said it was already ripped um, the hardest part is getting the sleep out, so it's all good. We'll just cut it out and uh, be done with it. So it actually wasn't that bad. So I'll just kind of show you guys the sleeve. So we had a cut, and then we kind of just forcefully took it out. But I think it was seized in there because you see how rusted it is. That could be, you know, how it's hydraulic filled. They yeah. Say, so all that yeah. stuff spilled because it was obviously already. It was already leaking. Cause, I mean, there's no fluid. We don't at all. know when it blew though. Yeah, exactly. I was completely like stuck in there. So we got that out. That was literally the hardest part. So everything we'll from here machine. should be uh, free flowing. So we showed you guys each as we took it out. Now we're gonna show you together. So this was the old bushing. As you can see, it's like shredded and torn and like just donezo. And then this was the shield that we had to take out. So as you see, it's all rusted. We had to cut it out, of course. It wasn't that bad with that Sawzall. I made it pretty easy. But yeah, this was pretty much the whole reason why the car was jerking back and forth and it basically looked like I didn't know how to drive. So. We're gonna go ahead and put in the new one, which is right here. Big difference. So the cool thing about the new one is, it's these two and combined into this one, right? I mean, of course this middle piece comes out, but in a sense, I think it, we just press this in all together. And then, yeah, then we have these two rear mounts that we're gonna, and the cool thing about these is, these actually get put on outside. So we can actually put these on with the differential being um, unmounted. And then we can just mount it back up with these on. Um, so yeah, we're gonna go ahead and throw this on and then, uh, which way does put everything it back together. Well, this is gonna be the new bushing. What we're gonna do is we're gonna put this in somewhat like that. And then we're gonna take a rubber mallet and we're just gonna hit it in place. Not, Not like that, but you guys <laughs> get the point. <laughs> so we are about to knock these bushings out on this differential. So we actually plugged it because you know, since it has fluid in it, it will spill. Leave it on there. Yes. And we're we knocking on the front. No, 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 upside down. Upside down? Yeah. Oh, but you're saying like flip it over? Yeah. Okay, so yeah, we'll flip this over, knock these off, and then put the new ones on. Ready? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. 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 I wish all that one was that easy. I know, right? <laughs> All right, so we have these back bushings in. They're pressed in, so they're gonna be a little separated right now, but once we mount it up and screw it in, it should uh, come together as they should. Uh, of course, we got the rear main bushing in. So all that's left to do is just put this diff underneath the car, jack it up, line everything up, and put everything back together. So we do have the differential back inside the vehicle. I know it's dark, so you can't really see. So we're just gonna pretty much reverse everything that we did to take the differential out. Um, I don't really wanna show you guys this process just cause it might be a little lengthy. Um, but I already have the axles back in, I have the drive shaft back in. Um, so we're just, like I said, we're just gonna put everything back together and then uh, hopefully start and drive this car tonight just to make sure everything is good. And then we'll just do the differential flush another day cause I do have that fluid over there too. All right, so we just finished. It's like 2 a.m. in the morning, stuff everywhere. Everything is back on. Let's go ahead and start this car. Make sure everything is good before we drop it. Let's go ahead and test drive this car and let's see. So 
so right away it is smoother but I think because I still hear a squeaky noise so I'm wondering if that bushing being out for so long kind of threw out like an axle or something like that because it does feel way smoother but I'm still hearing that squeaky noise I don't know if you guys can hear it Let's see if I can duplicate it hear it so I wonder I'm wondering if it if it threw out an axle and we have to replace axles now yeah I'm not too for sure what I'll do is I'll jack the car up tomorrow and I'll, uh, I'll take a second look underneath let's see if I can actually put the power down I mean I know we need new tires to hold this power but let's see uh, let's see if that rear diff pushing made a huge difference uh, we still uh, still got a little sideways but we're just gonna blame that on the tires so now that we have those rear differential bushings installed the car like feels way better now it doesn't rock back and forth and trying to get that first gear um, but instead we get those characteristics of the safe sport clutch which i'd rather deal with any day uh, but we just have to figure out that squeaky noise because it's kind of annoying i can't have that going on when like rolling through meets or like even parking lots um, i'm just hoping that it's not a rear wheel bearing but like i said we'll figure it out um, this is all that i have for you guys in this video there is more to come with this car i actually want to do like a canyon run with this car get like a pov video of canyon run i think you guys would enjoy that but I will catch you guys in the next one as always. Peace out, stay safe, and stay tuned. No flex, I done dropped a couple bands on it, brand new Rolex. I can pop a couple bands on you, girl, you know that. When she get to popping, I like way to go. We, we gon' get to popping on the radio, turn down.